Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lobsters. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Listen carefully. Nutrition authorities say breakfast should furnish from one quarter to one third of the day's total food requirements. So eat a good breakfast. Eat a better breakfast. Eat a cereal. Yes, you can't go wrong if you eat plenty of cereal, fruit, milk, bread, and butter. So tomorrow, enjoy a bowl full of delicious Quaker puff wheat or Quaker puff rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. There's no beating this eaten for taste and swell. What's more, for added health benefits, crisp, tender wheat or rice shot from guns furnishes restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yes, and talk about good. Just try them. You'll love to eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. A small group of men surrounded the pot-bellied stove in the trading post at Selkirk in the Yukon Territory. Though the long winter was drawing to a close, the Chinook wind still blew crisp and cold. And Mike Delaney, the owner, had become used to having men lounging around the stove in the afternoons, getting warm and discussing the topics of the day. It'll soon be time for the big talk. Yeah, and then I'm pulling out of here. Me too. I'm heading for the States. And how about you two boys? Yeah, we'd like to get away from here too, but we can't leave here broke. We'll find a way. Don't worry. <laughs> Hello uh, there, Osiris. Hello. And how's tricks out your way? Oh, mighty good, Mike. Mighty good. Sure, and you didn't come in from Indian Creek by yourself, did you? No, I'm a little too old to get around by myself in this snow and cold, Mike. My son brought me in. He's got business at the claims office. So we'll be in Selkirk overnight. Oh, uh, <clears throat> give me a bit of charn tobacco, will you? Oh, that I will. Uh, there you are. There you are, Osiris. I'll put it on Ben's account. Yeah, I guess you'd better. I don't have a cent to my name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By cocky, I soon will have, yes, sir. Sure, and you look as if you're busting at the seams with a bit of news. What is it now? Ben's finally struck pay dirt, Mike. Well, well what do you think of that? No, that's fine. Fine. Is it much of a strike? Yes, but it was back in the mine, almost at the boundary of Ben's claim. So he staked out more land on the hill back at the claim. He's here to get it registered when the office opens tomorrow morning. Well, oh. it's, it's mighty yeah. glad I am to hear it, Osias. Ben and me is going to put up at the hotel in style tonight. <laughs> and how's Ben's wife and boy? Carol, oh, she's fine. Happy as a lark over the whole thing. She and the boy are waiting out at the cabin till we get back. Have to go a long way to beat that boy, Freddy. No, he's a likable youngster, all right. Now, is there anything else to say? No, just a tobacco, Mike. I'll see you before we leave town for Injun Creek. So long. Well, so long, I say. So long. Where now, where do you think of that? Ben Fay's truck. Is that where you're getting the money we need, Dave? How do you mean, Lou? Let's go to the cafe. We can talk there. Come on. All right. Come in again, boy. Thanks. Yeah, we will. A short time later, Dave and Lou sat at a table in a corner of the cafe, talking in low voices. Well, Lou, what's your idea? That old codger who came into the trading post. The one that Mike called Osias. Yeah, but he didn't have enough to pay for the charter of baggage. Now, wait a minute. I didn't expect to get it from him. It was what he said that interested me. Uh, go on. Well, here's my idea. Indian Creek's about five miles from here. We go up there tonight. What for? The old man said he came to town with his son, Ben, didn't he? And he said Ben's wife and boy were at the cabin alone. Yeah, I know all that, but what's that... Ben made a gold strike. 
That means he's taken a lot of gold out of his claim. And like as not, he hid it out at their cabin. Are we getting the dog team and going out there? Right now. By the time the old man and Ben get there in the morning, we'll be gone. With the gold. Now, let's go. Leaving the cafe, Dave and Lou got their dog team at their cabin. Prepared to start for Indian Creek. There, Dave. I guess we're ready to leave. I hope Ben Newton and his old man don't change your minds. Decide to go back to the cabin tonight. Hey, won't. You remember what the old man said? We have to wait till morning to get that claim registered. Yeah, good thing for us. It'll give us a chance to get the gold and be a long way from there by the time they get there. Let's get going. Sure. Hush! You hush! Hush! Meantime, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police stopped his dog team at a cabin at Indian Creek. Okay. Oh, you husky. Oh. Come on, King. We'll stop here and rest a minute or two where it's warm. Oh, it's Sergeant Preston and King. I do come in. Thanks, Mrs. Newton. Come on, King. Scotty, it's good to see you and King again, Sergeant. Thanks, Freddie. <laughs> Looks as though King's glad to see you, too, aren't you, fella? You know, it's amazing that such a big dog, trained to track criminals, could be so kind to children. Oh, I don't see how anybody could ever be afraid of King. When he goes into action, Freddie, King can look very ferocious, but he isn't a killer. He's learned to overpower a man without actually hurting him. Has Ben working his claim, Mrs. Newton? No. Ben and his father went to Selkirk. We've struck gold at oh. last, Sergeant. But it's back at the boundary, and Ben's taked out more land there. He went in to register his claim. Well, that's good news. Ben's worked hard and deserves to make good. Oh, we're all so excited about it. Oh, it seems too wonderful to be true. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a two-room cabin, Sergeant. If you care to stay till Ben and his father get back... Why, no it. thanks. I want to get to Selkirk as soon as possible. Oh, I'll make some hot coffee then to warm you before you leave. Oh, good. Thanks. Now, Freddie, you and King go in the other room and play so you won't be underfoot. All right. Come on. Oh, Freddie would give almost anything to own a dog like King. Uh, sit by the fireplace, Sergeant. I'll have the coffee ready in a jiffy. Half an hour later, Sergeant Preston and King left the Newton cabin and headed down trail. A short distance down the trail, Preston turned off onto a shortcut, which was rarely used by other travelers who felt more certain following the main trail. Because they took the shortcut, Preston and King missed meeting Dave and Lou, who were approaching the Newton place. At the cabin a short time later, Freddy had gone to bed in the back room. His mother closed the door of the room and then sat before the fireplace with her sewing. A short time later, she heard someone stopping outside. Oh, someone's stopping. It's a good thing I have a big pot of coffee ready. I wonder who it is. You Ben Newton's wife? Yes, I am. We got some business to settle. Come on in, Dave. Oh, just a minute. Shut I... up and close the door. I'm expecting my husband any minute, so you'd better we be We happen to way. know him and the old man won't be back till morning. Now, we want the gold that he's got hidden here. And if you know what's good for you, you'll get it for us. Oh, well, you've come here to rob us. That's right, we have. Let's search the place, Lou. Maybe it's in that other room oh, there. No, no, right. please don't go in there. My little boy's sleeping and you'd frighten him. All me. right. If you don't want us to scare the daylights out of him, you better tell us where the gold's hid. I won't tell you. I won't. I'll go get the kid, then she'll tell us. No, 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 wait. I'll, I'll tell you. Well, make it quick, then. Where is it? It's in the shoebox over in that cupboard. Now, see if she's telling the truth. Watch her a minute, Dave. All right. Here's the shoebox, all right. And it's got plenty in it. Oh, now, now, please go. You have the gold. Yeah, but before we do leave, we're going to tie you up. Oh. Yeah, good idea. She might try to go to town somehow and spread the news if we don't tie her. Now, there's some strips of rawhide hanging over here. I'll get them. You'll be sorry for this, both of you. Shut up. Come on, come on with those strips, Dave. Yeah. These will keep her from getting anybody before the men get back from town. Yes. Yeah. Oh, come on. Don't come we'll be a long ways away from here by then. Meantime, in the other room, Freddy was awakened by the sound of voices. For 
a moment, Freddy stood listening. He realized something was wrong. And though he was frightened, his one thought was to get away and get help. He dressed quickly. Then, putting on his parka and mucklucks, the boy quietly slipped out the back door. I just have to. Moving from the back of the cabin in a wide circle so that he wouldn't be seen by Dave, who was loading supplies on the sled out front, the ten-year-old boy finally reached the main trail below the cabin. Then, heading toward town, Freddy ran as fast as his small legs could carry him. When I find Sergeant Preston and King, those crooks will be sorry, I bet. I have to find them. I have to get to town. In the cabin, after drinking their coffee, Lou went into the back room. In a moment, he came back. Hey, Dave, the kid's gone. Oh, What's no. it? Must have heard us out here and got scared. Oh, my poor Freddy. Maybe oh. better try to trail him and bring him back. No, I <laughs> let him go. Young kid like him can't get far in this weather. He'll lose himself. In the morning, they'll spend time trying to find him before they start to bother about us. Please untie me. Please let me try to find my boy. He'll freeze to death. Yeah, yeah, maybe he will. Come on, Dave, let's be on our way. We want to put a lot of mileage between us and this cabin by morning. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Yes, everyone loves delicious, ready-to-serve wheat or rice shot from gun. Take the rich man, for instance. He says... Money can't buy a finer-tasting breakfast cereal. As for the poor man, listen to what he says. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice makes an economical deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. And the beggar man says... When it comes to a handout, make mine the cereal cut from guns. That nut-like flavor is terrific. Now take the thief. He's really not one at all. He's simply the fellow who loves to help himself to a second bowl full when nobody's looking. And naturally, Mom doesn't mind that one bit. And listen to what the doctor says. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nutritious. They furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They're good for you. And the lawyer? I like the famous Quaker money back with a smile guarantee. It's on every single package. Last but not least, the Indian chief. Hmm. Me trade in bow and arrow any day for gun that shoot Quaker puffed rice, Quaker puffed wheat. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Some mighty good reasons why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice deserve top spot on your family breakfast table. Just remember, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. Frightened by what he had overheard at the cabin... Freddy bravely tried to get to town to find his father and Sergeant Preston. The snow-covered trail and the cold, sharp wind made the going rough, even for a man. Soon, Freddy's pace slowed to a walk as his legs tired. Then the small boy became exhausted, stopping every few steps to catch his breath. I'm tired, but I can't stop. I can't. Please, God, please. Let me find Sergeant Preston and King so I can catch those bad men. And please don't let them hurt me. I'm so tired. i got to rest a little while. I just got to. Instinctively, Freddy turned from the trail and headed toward a low ridge. Soon he reached a low-hanging ledge, and crawling under it out of the wind, he sank to the snow-covered ground, completely exhausted. I'll only rest a few minutes. I, I, I'm so tired. Oh, Papa, why did you ever leave us alone? Why did you? I'm so scared. I won't cry. I won't. Golly, if, if 
I just wasn't so tired. After arriving in Selkirk, Sergeant Preston went to police headquarters. Then, a short time later, he and King entered the hotel, where Preston spied Ben Newton and his father in the lobby. We've got to get it registered. Hello, Ben. I thought I'd find you here. Well, Sergeant Preston and King. Dad, you remember the sergeant. Why, of course I do. Heard a lot about him and that fine dog of his, too. <laughs> Thanks, Osias. Ben, I stopped at your cabin on the way here, and Carol told me the good news. Oh, I'm glad you stopped. Uh, are they all right? Oh, yes. Freddie and King had a fine time together. I've been feeling nervous about them being alone tonight. Oh? I've never left them alone before. Dad's usually there, but, well, he hasn't been to town for so long. First time I've been here all winter. Of course, we didn't know we'd have to wait till morning to get Ben's new claim registered. Office was closed when we got here. I see. Tell you what, Ben, since you feel nervous about Carol and Freddie, I can get that paper fixed up for you tonight. I'll take you over to the claim agent's cabin, and you can go back home tonight. Say, that's fine. You ought to have things fixed up within the hour. I'm uh, going back up to the way in the morning, so I'll stop by and see you. Well, why not come along with us tonight? Sure. We can put you up at the cabin for the night. Well, Then uh... Dad and I will have company on the trail. All right, I'll take you up on that invitation. Fine. Check out now, Ben. We'll go get the paper fixed up and be on our way. I'll Say, do that, Sergeant. Right away. After getting his claim registered with Preston's help, Ben put his father on the dog sled. Then Sergeant Preston got his dog team. And with King running ahead, they set out for Ben's cabin. They were within a mile of the cabin when King, sniffing the trail ahead of them, suddenly stopped and barked. The intelligent dog had recognized the scent of the boy he had played with earlier. And as the two dog teams approached, he stood whining and barking frantically. Hold there! Hold there! Hold there! What's the matter with King, Sergeant? I don't know yet, Ben, but he's trying to tell us something. What is it, fella? What? He's running back down the trail. Oh, look. He's turning off and heading for that ridge. Come on, Ben. We'll investigate. He stopped there at that ledge. Listen to him howl. Yes. King's found something or somebody there. Let's hurry. What is it, King? What have you... Ben, someone's lying there. What? Holy smoke. It... it looks like Freddy. Yes, it is Freddy. Freddy. Freddy, wake up. But maybe we're too late. Maybe he's... Freddy. So, so tired. Got to tell Papa about bad news. Something must have happened at the cabin, Ben. <coughs> I think Freddy will be all right. I'll take him to my sled and wrap him up in blankets. Ben! Ben, what is it? What? Why, it's little Freddy. How in tarnation did he get here? We don't know. But that's what we have to hurry and find out. If one of us had stayed at the cabin, this wouldn't have happened. Well, even if one of you had, perhaps you couldn't have prevented it. Freddy said something about bad men. Yes, I know. You think maybe some crook stopped at the cabin hoping to find the gold? Oh, but how could they have heard about it? Did you mention it, Osias, when you were in town? Well, reckon I did say something about it at the store, but I didn't think anyone We'll would... put Freddy on my sled. we will be all right, King. Come on, boy. we got to hurry. Carol, if something happened to her... Take it easy, Ben. We'll soon get there. Here's the sled. There. I'll cover Freddy with the blankets. I, I shouldn't have left. Them. All we can do is hurry and see what's happened. On King! On! A short time later, they hurriedly entered the cabin. Sergeant Preston carried Freddy. Oh, Carol. Oh, Ben, you found Freddy. Untie your wife, Ben. I'll put Freddy on the bed. Oh, Carol, honey. What happened? Who did this? Hi, Cracky, somebody will be sorry. They come here and did such a thing. The two men, rough-looking men, came here. Yeah. They took our gold from the cupboard. I had to tell them where it was. There. How did Freddy get away? Well, Freddy must have heard them talking. He was in the back room when they went to tie him up. He was gone. He was trying to get to town to find me. Poor little fella. Freddy's a very brave boy, and he'll be all right. Oh, thank goodness. Carol... I heard you say two men came here and stole your gold. Yes. One was stocky with a dark beard, and the other was clean-shaven and slim. They headed up trail. Huh? And King and I have work to do. You mean you're going after them? The sooner the better. They couldn't have had much of a start. Oh, that's right. They haven't. I'm going into Freddy. Maybe I ought to go along with you, Sergeant. No, Ben, you stay here with your wife and boy. King and I can make better time alone. Come on, King. <laughs> Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye, Ben. On King! On! Dave and Lou had had only about half an hour's start. 
And since one of them was riding the sled, their progress was slower than that of Sergeant Preston and King. As the two crooks moved along the trail, they discussed what had happened. That woman sure was scared, Lou. It'll be morning before she's found tied up in that cabin. Yeah, we have nothing to worry about. I have been worried a bit about that boy getting away. I still think we should have trailed him. Ah, the kid was probably so scared he'll run until he drops in his tracks. Wind and cold will do the rest. Hey, it's about time for me to ride on the sled, Dave. You can drive the team for a while. Oh, oh there. Oh. Oh. Hey, hey, did you hear that? Huh. You think maybe somebody's trailing us already? I don't see how they could be. We better make sure, though. We'll head for that ridge over there and wait for them to come along the trail. Mush! Mush there! A few minutes later, Dave and Lou were crouched down behind a ridge off to one side of the trail. The northern lights made it possible for them to see quite clearly as Preston and King with the dog sled came around the bend. Hey, look, Lou. It's about... Uh Oh, something must have gone wrong. What do we do? Get your gun handy and get a beat on him as he passes by. And let him have it. There he comes now. He's almost opposite here. Here, you take the gun. You're a better shot than I am. And you better not miss. As Sergeant Preston and King approached the place where Dave and Lou had turned off the trail, King, who was running ahead, suddenly stopped, sniffing the trail. Then he stood barking as Preston came up to him. Oh, you husky. Oh, no. What is it, fella? Oh, I see. They turned off the trail. Well, that means they must be... Down, King, down! Sergeant Preston had turned to look toward the ridge, and he realized that the two crooks must be waiting there to ambush him. He had hardly spoken to King when a shot rang out. Ah, got down just in time. Though the dog team was exposed, Preston's sled was partially protected by a low boulder on the side of the trail. As Sergeant Preston dropped down behind the sled, he was thankful for the slight protection the low boulder gave him. Lucky I stopped the sled on this spot. The sled alone wouldn't have been any protection. Well, I'll let them know I'm still here. King lay for a moment watching. Then, as Sergeant Preston's attention was taken by another shot from the ridge, King began to crawl down trail away from the sled. King was intelligent enough to know that a direct assault toward the men behind the ridge was dangerous. Yet the great dog also knew that somehow he had to help eliminate the menacing gun before his master could act. Back at the ridge, Dave spoke. Hey, look, Lou. The big dog the body had with him must have sneaked down trail a bit. Now he's running away like mad. Yeah. <laughs> Shots must have scared him. Well, now all we got to do is concentrate on that mountain. For about five minutes, Dave and Lou controlled the situation, since Sergeant Preston dared not rise from behind the sled without being a perfect target. Finally, Lou expressed an idea. Hey, Dave. I got a good idea. Yeah? What? We'll pick off the Mounties' dogs one by one. And then if we don't manage to shoot him, we can just circle around and leave. He won't be able to follow. Hey, that's a good idea. Go ahead. Let's see you drop the first one now, Lou. <laughs> I'm taking my time and making sure. As Lou raised his gun and aimed carefully at the dogs in Sergeant Preston's dog team, he didn't notice the dark gray figure that crept around a corner of the ridge and stood momentarily glaring with hair bristling and ears perked forward. It was King who had circled around, had come up behind. And as Lou paused to be sure of his aim, King went into action. Look out, Lou! Look out! Straight at Lou, the gray figure flung itself, grabbing his gun arm and sending Lou flying into the snow. As Lou fell, the gun flew from his hand and went into a snowbank. Dave recoiled in terror as he saw the seemingly savage animal that had come from nowhere. The first thought that came to Dave's mind was that they were being attacked by wolves. He jumped to his feet, screaming with fear. Help! Help, wolves! Help! Help! Back behind the sled, Sergeant Preston heard King's snarling attack and realized that the intelligent dog had taken the crooks by complete surprise. As Dave called out, Preston got up and with gun ready, ran toward the ridge. Help! 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 King! Help, boy! Save us! Get them away from us! Shut up! My dog won't hurt you. That is, unless he's ordered to. Dog! We thought wolves were attacking us. King crept up on you and took you by surprise. Keep your hands up, both of you. Hey, that's a dog we thought ran away. King isn't the type to run away from danger. Watch him, fella. I'm taking both of you back to Selkirk for robbing the Newtons. You can't prove anything on us. Yes, I can. Mrs. Newton will identify you when we reach their cabin. Moreover, I'm sure the gold you took's on your sled. Come on, we're going back right now. Later, with both crooks riding their own sled, which Preston drove, while King led the Mounties' dog team, they reached the Newton cabin. 
Yes, Ben, here they are. Get off the sled, you two, and go inside. All right. Dogs to blame for this. One king. Here they are, Dad. King and the sergeant caught him. Show them the dirty crooks that tied up Carol, huh? Yes. Yes, those are the same men. And who's the box of gold they took? That's our gold, all right. Thanks a lot, sir. Tie them up, Ben. And you can help me take them to Selkirk. Oh, golly, you sure got them, sergeant. Well, you did your part, too, Freddy. And leaving the cabin and trying to get to town to tell us. So that's what the little fool was trying to do. Well, it's time we gave up when kids and dogs start getting so smart. King's the smartest and nicest dog in the Yukon. Aren't you, King? He's a lot of fun to play with, too. Huh? We thought he was savage as all get out. With your kind, King can be just as tough as one of our men. But he knows when to be kind and gentle, which is more than either of you could ever be. We think he's wonderful. Don't we, Freddy? Hey, golly, yes. We're lucky you know King and the sergeant. I bet Tr- King's trying to say something. Maybe. I guess he's ready to play now, Freddy. He knows that as far as we're concerned, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Discover why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice win the praise of many a He-Man Hollywood movie star. Try wheat or rice shot from guns yourself at breakfast tomorrow. These king-size grains are really swell tasting. They're exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. They're good for you, too. Remember, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's your guarantee that you're getting the original, crisp, fresh, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, a breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the empty coffin. Why should a man want the world to think him dead? That was the mystery we had to solve in this case. King and I found the answer when the trail of a man the world thought dead turned out to be the trail of a murderer. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. Ever notice how some dogs have thick, glossy coats? The kind you'd like your dog to have? Well, chances are dogs with good-looking coats and sturdy bodies get the right food. That's why you should feed your dog Kennel Ration. It's packed with vitamins and minerals, and he'll love it. You can actually see the chunks of lean red meat in every can. Choice cuts of U.S. government-inspected horse meat. Have Mom get Kennel Ration at her favorite dealer today. Kennel Ration, first in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>